Hello everyone, welcome to Fort Megs. Today we'll be giving you a weapons demonstration of this, the flintlock musket, commonly used by the American Army here at the fort. So stick around, it's a lot of cool stuff. Hi guys, I'm John from Fort Meggs, Ohio's 1812 battlefield, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about this, the flintlock musket, the primary weapon of the American Army here at the fort during the sieges of 1813. This specifically is the Charleville flintlock. <clears throat> It was produced in France in 1777 and part of France's support of the American Revolution. They sent about 25,000 of these over to the then colonies uh, in support of our war effort against Great Britain. And here we are again fighting the British at the fort. It is a flintlock musket, meaning that the whole apparatus is begun by this, the flint stone. It's attached to the hammer and when I pull the trigger that's going to fly forward and that flint is going to scrape across this steel plate here called the frizzen. And as it scrapes across that plate, hopefully we get a small spark from flint impacting steel. And that spark, if we get it, needs to drop straight down into this little pan on the side of the lock you can see. And in that pan, I'm going to place a small amount of gunpowder to prime it. And if we get a spark and if it falls straight down in there, that prime should explode. That explosion is going to travel through a tiny hole in the breech of the weapon just there. That explosion traveling into the breech of the weapon will impact the main charge which I will deposit down the barrel and that second explosion, larger than the priming explosion, is what's going to accelerate the musket ball out. Now these weapons are very unreliable. I just described a lot of different moving parts. Any one of those parts could go wrong and if they do, a misfire will happen, meaning nothing. The ball will not accelerate out the musket. In fact, about 25% of the time you pull the trigger, nothing will happen. So they're unreliable, could be dangerous for a soldier. They're also fairly inaccurate. This is a smooth bore musket, meaning that this pipe is simply a smooth tube, 69 caliber for the Charleville. And the ball that we are firing is spherical, 63, maybe a 64 caliber ball. So it's slightly smaller. It's going to have a lot of play in the tube as it goes out and it's bouncing around when it comes out, that spherical shape is just going to flutter through the air and it's going to go just about wherever it wants. So it's a fairly inaccurate weapon. But this is going to dictate the tactics of the era. Soldiers fighting in long lines, shoulder to shoulder, all delivering their fire together in a volley. And hopefully this wall of lead flying down the battlefield will impact the target selected. So the way it works, a soldier reaches in their right side cartridge box and pulls out the paper cartridge. It's pre-wrapped and everything is inside it that I need, the black powder and the musket ball. With both my hands filled, I have to use my teeth, good strong front teeth, 19th century teeth, to bite through that wrapper. Once I've got it open, I can pour that small amount of powder in the priming pan. Windy day, we're going to lock that off. Now the rest has to go down the muzzle. All the powder and the ball itself will be inserted with the wadding into the muzzle there. Now I have to make sure that everything gets from the muzzle there down to the breech where that priming explosion is going to happen. For that I have this tool called the ram rod. We're going to plunge everything down in there so it seats properly at the breech of the weapon. I can pull out that rammer, return it to its sleeve on the outside. It's ready for the next round if I need. The weapon is now fully loaded. Once there, the soldier comes to the shoulder arms position, indicating to his commanding officer everything is ready to go. The order will be given to make ready. The weapon will be pulled out in front and brought to the full cock position. A lot of tension on the spring in here, so that flint has a lot of impact on the frizzen to generate that spark. Second, the order to take aim will be given and all the weapons are lowered simultaneously and a target is selected. Then the order to fire. The soldier would then drop back and if they wish to continue firing, the process begins again. Thanks again. Stay tuned to the channel. We'll see you soon. <clears throat> <clears throat> Come on.
collection. <laughs> Hi guys. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this, the Flintlock Smoothbore Musket. So stick around. Uh, I wanna, what, what did I say? I should say something more like, Hi guys, welcome, welcome to Fort Meggs. 